So you can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the biggest complaints I get from women about men is the fact that men don't like opening up. Men don't like communicating and discussing issues and being transparent about what's going on and how they feel about things. And the unfortunate reality is that what makes the situation worse is that there are times where a woman can say or do things that really get to a man, but because he doesn't express to her the, the, the issue, she doesn't have a full understanding of what the problem is. Now, some men would argue that they've said something and the woman just dismiss, dismiss how they feel. But we're not going to talk about that part. We want to focus on the fact that there are a lot of unspoken things that happen or unspoken issues that occur that really can start to destroy the man's confidence. Now, when you looked at the title of this video, I hope you didn't think I was going to tell you how to destroy his confidence on purpose, all right, out of some vengeful rage or anything like that, because we don't do no unhealthy, uh, we, we don't give unhealthy tips and tricks on this channel, okay? But I want you to be aware of what can really start to uh, chip away at a man's self-esteem and start to cause problems that will show itself in other ways in the dating process, in a, in a relationship, or even in a marriage. So one of the first things and biggest things that a woman can do that destroys a man's confidence is weaponizing his past, all right? So for a lot of men, number one, just opening up about their past is, is very difficult to do. They don't do that with everyone. And when they do that with you as a woman, it is a sign of, I trust you, all right? Or at the very least, he wants to believe he can trust you. And that's why he allowed this information to come out. So when a situation then happens later on in the, in the dating or relationship, whatever, where you now use that to hurt him in that moment, not only one does it make him feel betrayed because here it was, I was, I was open to a woman, I was vulnerable with her, and now she's used this to attack me and, and, and used it to also disrespect me. And you got to understand that for men, we need to be respected in our relationships. So to feel so disrespected by this woman, that alone is going to hurt his confidence. But again, just the fact that you used his past against you when he tried to, or when he wants to believe he could trust you in that way. All right. But I want you to understand, it's not just about throwing things back in his face that he told you, which again, you have to really be careful not to do that. All right. And please understand, there's a difference between simply discussing the past versus weaponizing the past, all right? If you're gonna attack him with it, if you're gonna insult him with it, if you're gonna try to make him feel bad about it, that's attacking him. Versus if you're inquiring, so hey, remember that thing you told me and you're digging deeper because you wanna learn more, that's okay, all right? That's okay. But the other part of weaponizing the past that is a common issue is where You'll have a couple, let's say this is your in a relationship, but you're married, and the man has made a mistake. He hurt you in some kind of way. Let's just say he got mad at you one day and cursed you out, and that really hurt your feelings, okay? So now you guys discuss it, and we're working towards being better and communicating better, right? And as he's making this effort, maybe because you feel like he's been... He's, he hasn't been acting right for a long time. Let's just say, even though he just really cursed you out, there was a lot of other behavior and, 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 and words that were said that you didn't appreciate. So in your mind, it's like, well, I'm waiting to see that, that he's really changed before I truly open back up to him. And in this waiting process, which that alone can be very frustrating, but when he tries to pull good out of you, you now remind him of what he did. So again, you are weaponizing the past because rather than embracing the effort he's making right now, you want to use what he did before to excuse and validate why, you, why you're not willing or, or ready or able 
to open back up to him or to start pouring back into him what he needs from you. All right. And the reason why this is such a confidence destroyer is because if I'm the man and I genuinely made a mistake and now I'm genuinely working to <clears throat> get back in your good graces to make things better. Right. And you keep reminding me of what I did wrong rather than embracing what I'm now doing right. It makes me feel like, what's the point? What am I even doing here? I feel like I can't win. And with the way men think is that if it's not working, what, what's the point of continuing and trying to do this? All right. So a lot of men give up in the process of trying to change their behavior, not because they're unwilling to change, but they get to a point where they feel like this is getting me nowhere. All right. So you have to be mindful. I don't want to go there's a lot more deeper I can go into this specific point. But what I, I want to stress to you is that, listen, when it comes to this situation of he made a mistake and we're working on better, you have to focus on not continuously holding the mistake over his head, not, not dwelling in it, not beating him over the head with it. Instead, focus on, okay, if he's genuinely making an effort, good. And, and my thing is this. Now, if you're going to say to me, well, he hasn't been making that effort. Okay, well, then, then we can get to a discussion about why are we still with the guy. Maybe if he's not willing to make any changes, not making any effort, then that's just a sign of then he, he's just not willing to be serious about making things better with you. So let's end the relationship. But if he is making that effort, you can't overlook that and ignore that because you're going to cause more problems and do more harm than good. All right. So now the second thing women do that can destroy a man's confidence is trying to make him into something he's not. So, you know, I've said it before. There's this quote that says men marry women hoping they won't change. Women marry men hoping they will change. All right. And what I want to differentiate first is there's a difference between trying to get the best out of him versus trying to make him something he's not. So let's say, for example, and this is just a small example. Let's say he can be affectionate, but he's not as affectionate as you would like, or you would like him to do certain things. Let's say, for example, though he can be affectionate, he doesn't greet you when he sees you when you come home with a kiss and you would love for him to do that. All right. That's not really making him someone he's not. You're trying to improve, you're, you're trying to get him to improve in an area that he does show an ability to tap into, but maybe there is some things he needs to adjust, okay? Um, also, it could be the way that he speaks to you, all right? That it's helping him understand how to better communicate with you. I don't think that's trying to get him to be something that he's not. But let's just say, and I'm going to use this one because it's a very, very common one. Let's just say he has a job and to him, he likes his job. And for the sake of this example, let's say he's making $65,000 a year to him. He is comfortable there. And let's just say at this job, he's a manager. All right. He's happy with his manager position. He's happy with his 65,000. He's good. But in your mind, it's like, but you, you're so talented. You, you could own your own business. You, you could be running your own thing, right? So now you're trying to push him to that level. Now, here's the thing. There may be some instances where that guy really just needed to push and he does have that in him. But many men are going to feel like you're trying to make me be something I'm not. I'm not trying to be someone's boss. I'm not trying to run my own company. I'm not trying to be some entrepreneur. I am happy where I am. And when you try to pull someone out of where they're happy, all right, to fit into a mold that you want to put them in, that creates a lot of tension, a lot of conflict, and a lot of insecurity because now the question starts to form in his head, am I not good enough as I am? It, it, it is, am I really what she wants or is she just with me for now hoping for something better? You see what I'm saying? Because you are not accepting him as he is. And, and it's a great thing. Um, I, I just did a recent video with Pastor uh, Kingsley. It's not out yet, 
but he talked about that he has a book where he gives uh, from A to Z, like using the different letters of the alphabet to explain what women need, what men need. And for A, he said women need affection, men need acceptance, all right? Men want to be accepted rather than you trying to always turn them into something else. So it can create a lot of frustration. Now, here's the thing. There are men who, out of loving you, out of a genuine desire of being with you, will try to embrace your vision of where you want this to go or who you want them to be. But again, it's like you've got to understand if he is not truly, genuinely excited about this, if he doesn't really, if it doesn't really resonate with him, it's going to start to get bad. It's going to start to feel like a burden to him and an annoyance to you because the burden will be him trying to fit into something that doesn't really work for him and the annoyance from you because you're going to always feel like I have to be on top of him. I have to push him. I have to damn near in some situations do it for him. All right. And that right there, it just creates more battle. So there's already a drop in or a, a hit to the confidence in just the idea of wanting to change him. But then the battle that will incur from there between the, with, with this conflict at hand will add more to the insecurity. Because trust and believe, chances are in those fights where there is this, this conflict, you may say some things that are even more hurtful. You may say some things that make him feel even more inadequate, okay? And it just goes downhill from there. So you just have to be mindful. And that's why it's so important to not necessarily date men for their potential. You have to date for their reality, who they are, what's their character. You have to find out what his vision is and then ask yourself, am I cool with that? And can I enhance his vision? So not take his vision and give him my vision. It's going to be a problem. No. Can I pour into his vision and make it something bigger, better, stronger? That's the formula that's going to work. But making him something that he's not, big problem. All right. So now that brings me to number three. The third thing women do to destroy a man's confidence is belittling him and emasculating him. Okay. So as we were just talking about where when you're trying to make him something that he's not, chances are there's going to be points of conflict and there's a very good chance that you're going to say things that aren't nice, <laughs> okay? And this is where the belittling or the emasculating can occur. And so a lot of women have what I like to call chopped his nuts off, okay? <laughs> I hope that verb isn't too much for some of y'all, but... A lot of women chop the, chop the man's nuts off and it emasculates him. Okay, now here's what I have observed with, with these couples when this happens. This is the mess, the extra messed up part. You chop his nuts off. At some point, he's going to try to reattach his nuts. All right? The thing is, men will choose the worst time <laughs> to try to reattach them. So essentially what it is is that you emasculated him. You are, you are undermining his manhood. He has to now reassert himself in some kind of way to regain his manhood. So now he will overcompensate in certain moments trying to show he's big, bad, tough man, trying to show I'm the leader, trying to show you're going to respect me, right? But all he does is now add more fuel to the fire and it becomes a bigger conflict. And then you lose more respect for this man. And it's this very vicious cycle, all right? So as a woman, it's important. Now, let me say this before I continue with that statement. To be clear about belittling and emasculating, you know, the way you talk to him can be very belittling and emasculating. So I always say, one, you, you don't want to say things like you are, you're acting like a B, okay? Using the B word for a man, not good. You, you, need, you ain't man enough. You need a man up. You acting like a little punk. Like anything that really calls into question his manhood, his masculinity, that's a problem, all right? And if you say to me, but he is acting like a B or he is, then listen, you have to learn either I am dealing with the wrong man so rather than emasculate and belittle, let me exit myself out of the situation. 
Or how can I encourage him to be better without emasculating and belittling him and disrespecting him? All right. So, for example, rather than you acting like a little B, focus more on, hey, I think I need you to, to be willing to handle this in this way. All right. So you're not you're, you're encouraging him on how to do it better rather than insulting the fact that he's not doing it the way you think he should be doing it right now. You know what I'm saying? So you, you got to be careful with your words. And for those of you, because I already hear some of y'all, we got to walk on eggshells with these men. They so sensitive. Listen, nobody likes to be spoken to in disrespectful ways. You don't. And neither does he. Everyone has to be mindful of their words. Everyone has to consider their partner's feelings. If you don't want to do that, respectfully, stay single. That's it. And I'll say that to a man or a woman. If you don't want to have to worry about how someone else feels and how you have to communicate to them, then you should remain single and be happy and free on that path. But if you would like a relationship, then you have to learn to embrace these things. And if they feel difficult for you to navigate, then that means there might be some things within you that need to, you need to resolve. And it also means that you haven't practiced it enough for it to become second nature to you. Because for me, it ain't nothing to be mindful of my words. It ain't nothing to consider how you feel. But I've had to practice that a lot, not just with regular life, but also in, my, in being a coach and all these different things. But you can do the same thing. You can practice with your family, with your friends. If you have kids, you can practice with the people around you, with even strangers when you run into them. Once you get comfortable and used to it, it won't be so hard anymore. So back to the main point, you got to be careful with belittling and emasculating. It, it, it's only a setup for more problems. And again, excuse me, it does lead to that man starting to feel more insecure. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of men trying to act tough, but they are hurting on the inside, all right? And though we can make the argument, just as I told you, well, if you have to stoop to that level, maybe you need to exit the relationship, I, I will acknowledge that even from the man's side, if, if, if he's being treated this way, he should exit. But let's, let's understand this reality. The unfortunate, or you can call it fortunate in some situations, reality is that Many people don't immediately leave once they're ingrained and invested in a relationship, all right? So even when they're being mistreated, many are hoping for things to get better so they're not going to be quick to walk away or they're afraid to walk away. There could be various reasons. There could be unhealthy attachments. But bottom line is, it's not always that simple for the vast majority of people. That's why if we're going to be there, though, and we're not going to walk away, then we need to look at what we can we implement to make this better. How do we improve this situation? And then if we've done all that we can do, then, then it's, it's even easier now to just say, OK, I can leave in peace. Oh, and one, one more example before I move to the next point of how you can be little and emasculate is when you're talking to him like he's a little kid. All right. Don't talk to him like he's stupid. Now, I know some of y'all are like, but he is stupid. <laughs> so listen, I, I get that there's moments of frustration. I get there's there's this feeling of sometimes he just doesn't get it. And that's why you're speaking to him in this way. But I'm telling you again, if you if you cannot find a way to communicate with this man in a healthy way, for whatever reason, you feel like he's slow, you, you feel like he, he's just not, he just doesn't care, whatever the case may be, then I would rather you say, you know what, this isn't working. But when you start to engage in these negative behaviors, here's one of the big problems. You develop that habit of going to the negative way of approaching it with him. Trust and believe you're going to end up doing that with other people. It doesn't just stay there. And not just other people, but other relationships. It now becomes your default mechanism. Don't get comfortable doing that. You've got to learn that if there is an issue with communication, and maybe, listen, rather than going to, he's just so stupid, maybe you're not learning how to effectively talk to him in a way that he can understand you and receive you. And I stress the word receive because again, 
We are responsible for how we deliver our message. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And if you don't learn how to deliver it to that specific individual, because different people receive differently, then you're going to always have a hard time. So you've got to embrace. It's not just saying the words. It's how you communicate them to make sure you guys are getting on the same page or to help you guys get on the same page. All right, so now let's, let's, before we get to the next one, which is a big one, so please keep watching, all right? Here's your chance to get your questions answered for free. I want you to go to www.askstephanspeaks.com. You can click the link in the description or in the comments section. You'll have an opportunity to submit your question and you'll have a chance to join my next live coaching call where you can get your question answered, your personal questions answered for free. So again, askstephanspeaks.com. Take advantage of this. So I said there's a big one. And here's another way that a woman can destroy, I'm going to stress the word destroy, destroy a man's confidence. And that is not showing him any sexual desire. All right. Now, let's start with the dating phase. I know that some of you are already thinking, but wait a minute, we're, we're not supposed to be having sex. We're supposed to be waiting or step on. You're supposed to be encouraging us to wait, right? Even if you are, number one, I always say, I'm, I'm not telling y'all when I talk about sex things, it's not saying go have it. It's, it's acknowledging the fact that some of you are having it. Some of you will have it before you get married, before you get in a relationship. So we still have to discuss the dynamic of it. But even if you are waiting, okay, a man needs to feel like you are attracted to him and you do desire him. That doesn't mean you have to throw yourself at him. It doesn't mean you have to push him to the brink of sexual desire. In a, in a situation where you are waiting, simply letting him know how good he looks to you, simply letting him know that, you know, you, you, you do or want him sexually, but you're not prepared to go that route and you're not going to go that route right now. That's fine. Like you can still communicate. You can still give him an energy of desire. You can still, if he's comfortable with it, be affectionate towards him. And I say comfortable with it because if you are waiting and he's respecting that weight, some men don't want too much touching because that's going to arouse him and it's going to make it very difficult for him to respect the boundaries. Whereas some men don't mind being super affectionate and still not taking it that far. That's a discussion you have to have with that specific individual. But the point is he still wants to feel like you are sexually attracted to him because what you have to understand as a woman is that plenty of men have gone on dates with women, have been patient sexually, have poured into this woman only to find out she friend zoned him, only to find out she's not really interested, only to find out he, she had sex with some other dude. It reminds me, I'm sorry, it reminds me of this episode of Family Guy. <laughs> I don't know if some of y'all watched that show, but there's an episode where the dog and don't worry about the details, just follow me here. But the dog in the show, which acts like a human being, he was dating a woman. He usually rushes to sex. He said, nah, nah, I'm not going to do it this time. Or the baby on the show was convincing him. I'm sounding crazy right now, but the baby on the show was telling him, wait, you, you always rush to sex. So he waits and he waits. And then one day he passes by a car and it's his homeboy having sex with the girl he was dating. And she says to him, I thought you weren't interested because you never made a move. Now, though this is a cartoon and this is all fun and, and jokes on TV, that stuff happens for real. That might sound wild to you and be like, no, 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 that can't be happening. No, I promise you, stuff like that happens for real. It may not always be a homeboy that he knows, but yes, there's been plenty of situations like that. And this is why some men become a little bit more anxious about trying to push things along sexually because they're looking for the confirmation, the validation that you are actually into me. But now let's move along to you're in a relationship or you're married. You know, one of the most common love languages for men is physical touch. And men feel love through intimacy, all right? And they like to express their love through intimacy as well. So when you're not showing sexual desire, it not only messes with him because 
his desires not being met, his needs aren't being met, but it makes him feel less loved. It makes him feel less wanted. It starts to make him question like, yo, is there something wrong with me? Now, yes, there's a natural defense mechanism by a lot of men to then say, no, it ain't me. It's something wrong with her. But it's hard not at some point in time in that process to not question yourself when your partner's not showing you that love, especially when it's like, yo, she used to show it, but now she doesn't. What changed? That's confusing. That's frustrating. It's hurtful. You know what I'm saying? And it can cause a lot of problems. So as a woman, again, I think it's always important that you make sure you let your man know that you are attracted to him, that you desire him sexually. That's why I think a big thing for those of you who are married um, is, is initiating sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, just don't wait for him to want it. Show him you want it. And even for some of y'all who might be saying, but I don't really want it that bad, <laughs> right? Just, just sometimes you notice what he, like, again, it, there are things that you want from him that he doesn't really care for, but you want him to embrace it because it's important to you. Well, you may not always care for giving him some sex or giving him a quickie or whatever the case may be, but if you know it's important to him, you should embrace that and you should find ways to motivate yourself to make it happen every now and then. And when that man feels desired, because I, I feel the need to say, this is one of those hit in my spirit moments, there's a lot of women who will say to me, but I am having sex with my man. I am having sex with my husband and it feels like it's not good enough. And what they're overlooking and missing is that, yes, you are, no pun intended, sucking it up and taking one for the team when he wants to lay down with you, but you don't make him feel desired at all. All right. So the sex feels very flat and it feels more, you're, it's obligatory, but it's not truly like we're into each other. You're, you want it right now. Men want to feel like you're into it and you want it and you want them. You know what I'm saying? And when you do that, it makes them feel good and it, it feeds their confidence rather than destroys it. So that's the piece that might be missing in a lot of situations or it is missing a lot of situations is he doesn't feel desired by you. But yeah, you're just doing it just to do it. So we got to add some desire in there if we want to really make things work. All right, so I got to add another. My videographer just be throwing points at me sometimes that reminds me. So he made a great point. He said, this is why, and hear me out before you, you get triggered in any kind of way for those of y'all who might get triggered by this. But he made the point that this is why some men gravitate to the strip clubs, all right? Because... The stripper is making them feel desired. Now, here's what's crazy about the strip club. The man can go in there knowing very well, this is her profession, <laughs> okay? Knowing very well, she's just running game on me. But it feels good. Even though you know this is what she does, it feels good. But here's the thing. If, those, if the stripper is good at what she does, like, she can really make him fall into a place of thinking, maybe she really does want me. Maybe she is attracted to me. And that draws him in even more. Now, I'm not saying be a stripper. I'm saying <laughs> learn how to talk to him like a stripper. No. <laughs> I'm saying learn how to make a man feel good. Learn how to stroke that. I hate saying stroke that ego because there's such a negative connotation on stroke his ego. And the reality is that everyone, men and women, likes a little ego stroking. Let's just focus on the words, make him feel wanted and desired. That's all. That's all. Let's keep going. All right, so now here's another very important one. And I, I feel the need to say this probably isn't as common of an issue, at least from what I've seen, but it is and can be an issue. And another thing women do that can destroy a man's confidence is lacking boundaries with other men. Okay? So, you know, w one thing about men, and again, it's, ne it's never all, okay? Never all. Nothing I say is never meant to be all. But a lot of men, arguably most men, can tend to be territorial about the woman they're into. And I would argue some men are even territorial even when they're not really into you, all right? 
they, they're, that's just how they are with any woman they deal with. Any woman that they take interest in, they become very territorial. And so when they have a woman who then doesn't seem to respect the boyfriend, or not boyfriend, well, boyfriend or the husband dynamic that you are his woman, this is the way he's looking at it, right? It makes him feel like you, you're not respecting him. Now, here's a perfect example. I just saw a TikTok. I don't know how true this is, but they said this man broke up with this girl, his girlfriend, because she got a lap dance from Chris Brown at a concert, okay? He paid for her to go to the concert. I think he got her front row tickets, all right? She randomly gets pulled up to the stage. Chris Brown does his thing, dances all over her. She gets home. He tells her, we're done. Because to him, it's like, yo, you, you didn't have no boundaries here. You disrespected me. You disrespected our relationship. Like, you are in a relationship. You, you don't need to be on stage having some man grind on you. Now, listen, different men have different boundaries, okay? Some men might hear that and be like, yo, that's not that big of a deal. It's Chris Brown. It's a concert. I'm not worried about it. The same way there are some women who might hear the strip club uh, example and they don't care if their man goes to a strip club as long as they're coming home. Different people have different boundaries. But whatever those boundaries are, you need to learn them, number one, all right? So I think it's very important that when you get into a relationship or when you're dating a guy, you ask him in, in his perception, what does he deem inappropriate? One, I think that's, that's such a great thing to do in the sense that it shows that you care about what is important to him or what his boundaries are, all right? And two, of course, it helps eliminate any confusion because you might think something is not a big deal. He might think it is. And if you guys can discuss this in advance, then we can, one, come to a conclusion of, are we in alignment with where we want to place our boundaries, because it's very possible if using the Chris Brown example, you have this discussion with your man. He's like, yo, if, I, if that was me, I, I would break up with you, too. And to you, it's like, no, nah, it shouldn't be a big deal. Well, then we might need to learn. We might need to accept that that just means we see things differently and maybe we should not continue with this relationship. Because what else are we not going to agree on as far as what should be boundaries and what shouldn't? Right. Or we might realize, oh no, I, or whether we were on the same page initially, we can respect where each of us are drawing those lines and say, okay, I can work with that. That's cool. Now we can move forward and we don't have these problems. But it's not just having a lack of boundaries, but it's also constantly crossing those boundaries. Because again, to men, like the last thing men want to hear is some other man saying, yo, I saw your girl and this dude was all up in her face and she wasn't rejecting him. She wasn't, you know what I'm saying, establishing that boundary. And again, there's a difference between some dude harassing you versus you entertaining someone, all right? For some men, those boundaries aren't just about offline in person, but how you carry yourself online, all right? Some men have boundaries of, yo, you shouldn't be posting anything close to sexy online. That's crossing a boundary to them. And to them, that's disrespectful. And to some, though some may feel disrespected, they may still remain or try to hold on. But in holding on while you're crossing those lines, it's, it's knocking down his self-esteem and confidence because he feels like you don't respect him. All right? And it makes him question like, dang, like how can I trust uh, she's, she's not going to leave me? Because understand, when I say confidence, it's not just confidence in self that you're messing with in, these, in the list of things I mentioned in this video. It's also confidence in his ability to be with you and trust to be with you in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And that starts to erode when you do all these things I mentioned. So all that to say there has to be a discussion as early as possible as what are respectable boundaries. I remember even one time I used me, I was getting to know someone and I asked her, I said, yo, I think it's a great thing to pull out random scenarios and talk to each other about like, okay, how would you handle this? How do you perceive this? So I asked her, I said, listen, if, you, if we go to a club by ourselves, so let's just say you go to the club with your girls, it's your girl's birthday, I'm at the club with my boys, my boy's birthday, and someone wants to dance with us, is that inappropriate 
or is it okay? Having that discussion of, okay, what's acceptable and what isn't? And, and, and I'm not going to tell you what our answers were, <laughs> but we were on the same page, so it was cool, you know what I'm saying? But that's a whole different story. But the point is, yes, have those talks. All right, so I actually originally had two more, but I don't want to keep this video going. So as always, whenever I have extra more, uh, points to make, I'll create a separate video for that. But what I want to say to you is, again, it's important. Communication is key. And the more we can communicate and discuss these things up front, the better off we can be. And we have to understand that we have a responsibility in how we pour into each other through communication, through our behaviors, through the energy that we bring to a relationship if we want to establish and experience something special. And when we're doing what we're when we're doing our part and that person cannot get on the same page or meet us there, then that's just more evidence. We need to let them go and move on to something bigger and better. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. So, you know, one thing I can say with confidence as a man who's been doing this coaching thing for over 15 years is that women really don't understand men, okay? And, you know, I think a 